Hey CFI, hey Greg Orr here, and we are about to shoot our next Insider for the month of May, and we got a very special guest here today. Mr. Tim Hicks, Senior Operations Manager, is with us, and I'm going to ask Tim to give us a real brief safety message before we get into it. So, Mr. Hicks, can you give us a great safety message? Absolutely can, Greg. So, I want to talk just real quick about alcohol. We've had a couple of upticks or a couple of incidents in the organization where we've had some professional drivers getting nabbed with alcohol in the truck. So, I just remind our professional drivers out there, but also for us at home, there is no room, no tolerance. For, for drinking and driving. There's no room, no tolerance within the CFI organization for the possession or consumption of alcohol, either in a company vehicle, on company property, or in a commercial motor vehicle. So what I just encourage folks is want to have an adult beverage, secure yourself a hotel room, or you're not out there on the road, you're not driving, you're not in with the, the general public, and you'll, you'll be safe and that's what we're looking for. Yep, lock her down. That's the best thing you can do. Uh, the month of May is really a pretty special month for our professional military veterans out there, right? And uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about that. Part of the reason why you're here today as well. We got Memorial Day that's going to be coming up, and uh, you know we are there to remember those who have sacrificed their lives for us. And then we, you know, we talk a little bit about military appreciation. But Mr. McCain, John McCain, was the one who chaired this and introduced that every May is Military Appreciation Month. Military Appreciation Month it just encourages us as Americans, all Americans, to reflect on the sacrifices made by the GIs, made by the, the folks, the soldiers, sailors, airmen, the volunteer forces that stepped up to the game and, and put themselves in harm's way to defend us as Americans. So, Well, before we get too far into it, I just want to say thank you for every one of you folks out there that have served and continue to serve for us, and we appreciate you and your family sacrifice. So I just want to talk just a minute about Memorial Day, too. So, you know, we're in Military Appreciation Month, but in May we have Memorial Day, and I think that's a big one because this is our opportunity to honor those that served and lost and gave their lives for, for, for our country, right? They gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. So it's, a, you know, yeah, it's a three-day weekend and, you know, we have barbecues and picnics and things like that and drag races, but, but please just take an opportunity to, and, and remember those that have, have given that ultra, ultimate sacrifice, with, you know, during the time of service. That's, that's this opportunity for, for those. So. Why don't we jump in and get to know you a little bit? Um, obviously, you've been with the organization for quite some time, but why don't you just give us a little bit of history of what you've done? Former Air Force veteran. I did eight years in the Air Force down in southwest Oklahoma. Um, I kind of think that, that that's where maybe I got some of my, my roots in transportation. Uh, some of my map reading skills came right from the day they gave me orders to Oklahoma and they took this kid out of Detroit and sent me to Oklahoma. And the first question I was was, where's Oklahoma? And so it got mapped out and said, I'm okay, now I'm heading to a wheat field. Yep. And they, they landed me in the wheat field and had the opportunity to work on, on some of the world's largest aircraft. The Air Force Base I was at was around transportation. And I'm, I'm pretty proud to be, you know, to have that, that history. Yeah, and, and yeah. you know, my family, my brother was in the Air Force as well. And my dad was in the Army. I did World War II in Korea. So a little bit of track record of following them yeah. so the air force didn't give me much opportunity to travel and see the world other than a, a, a desert and a and, and a little bit of stint in in the philippines for a day but uh so i thought well i'm gonna go drive truck did my research and picked cfi and moved to joplin missouri and been here ever since 31 years i've, 31 I've been hanging around here so and 1.2 million miles with us right million miler and then you've had how many different roles throughout the organization i'm not even sure i can count them but i've had the, i've had the opportunity so when i you know outside of driving I, I i started off like most folks did in operations and i worked at a night dispatch i worked the local dispatch window here in joplin uh i was customer service for a while i was a customer service manager i think my biggest chops in operations up until now was probably planning. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time in, in, the, in the planning seat and then had the opportunity to take on the role as a driver advocate. That was a pretty exciting role because we, we sort of created that from, from the ground up, moved into to my current position as a, as a senior operations manager. I supported the planning team, the operations network group, and now I, I support the, the fleet side of the house and, of yeah. course, all our professional drivers. So, And you've been named multiple driver of the months and even driver of the year as well, yes. of course. Yeah, I'm, awesome. very, I'm very proud of very those, awesome. those achievements very awesome. and accomplishments. Our theme is true to the troops, and that's a pretty big deal for us. Give me just a little bit of a synopsis of what that means to you, and then let's kind of talk through 
some of the things that we actually do to recognize uh, all of our military veterans. I'm happy that, that CFI has always seemingly been supportive of our troops. And so, you know, I, I kind of go back to a lot of, a lot of outfits, a lot of people talk a lot, but CFI talks and walks that true to the troops where we support almost 14% of our driving staff and back office support staff are veterans. I think that's phenomenal that we take that time and recognize them and you know through our wrap trucks and the wrap trailers that we have and yeah. those you know those are our shining beacons and examples of of what cfi does and stands for yeah it's pretty crazy and i truth be told i think that number is actually probably higher than 14 percent. but you know we have a lot of veterans that tend to be pretty humble and, and don't necessarily always recognize themselves as being a part of that as either. So Holy Joe's Cafe, and I know a lot of our professional drivers know this, but maybe not some of our other employees or even uh, the public, but we donate anywhere between 30 and $80,000 of in-kind transportation a year um, in, in supporting that. And what we really do is we deliver coffee to the military bases and, and, uh, and we do that at no charge, obviously. The other thing is we've been partnering with Reeves Across America for uh, 10 plus years. You got to deliver a load down in Houston, I think, right? Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about that experience. So that, that experience was probably one of the most humbling experiences I ever had. So I had the opportunity, A, to drive a wrap truck, yeah. which was, was pretty cool, uh, down in Houston, Texas back in 2015. Uh, along with you know many other carriers, but we we had the opportunity to sit in in the ceremonies and just to, to meet the families, talk to the families, and it's probably something that I'll that scored in my mind I'll never forget is as is, is a as a gold star mom. So that's a, a gold star family is a person that lost a family member yep. in, in service and came up to me and just wanted to hug me and tell me how much she appreciated CFI and bringing those wreaths. And I was, I was like, I didn't have words. I'm like, I just, just drive the truck. The one last thing I'll mention is for all of our military veterans that are out there, we do have uh, badges on Work Vivo that you can follow and trail. And there's also, if you self-select that you are a veteran, uh, there's some things out there that we can actually do to recognize you even more. So we highly encourage you to do that. We, we love our military veterans uh, and we just want to continue to recognize and thank them for what they do for us. So obviously, as you lead our operations team out there and uh, a big portion of our operations team, I know you've got some really kind of key takeaways for our staff and our professional drivers. What are the things that you think are important that would help everybody become just a little bit more efficient, more effective and, and how they do their jobs each day. One of the things is just being good stewards of CFI's financials. I ask this, I'm sure our professional drivers, they see the messages I send out weekly, uh, talking about really two things that, I, that I'm looking for help on. And that's turning in our paperwork in a timely manner. I think we've, we as an organization have made it as simple as humanly possible to get that done with with transflow with the transflow app with the kiosks at our cfi man terminals with the, the kiosks at the truck stops of just getting those bills signed dated and turned in at every delivery and even if you're making a relay scan the bills in and that way we have copies of them if they in, you know happen to get lost somewhere because our problem our challenge is once we have the bills the customers are not always inclined to generate new bills for us when we they expect us to manage the paperwork and we don't get paid unless we have a dated and signed bill of lading and so we've got revenue out there that sits on the table months and then we finally have to write off and the and then the margins are just too small and we work too hard for every load we get to to be writing those those bills off or those those loads off you know, because we can't get the paperwork turned in. So I just need everybody's help with that. You know, folks, I can't stress that one enough. That is a huge, huge deal to us. And we've got a lot of dollars that are still outstanding that we need to get collected. And if we can't turn the bills back in, we can't bill a customer. It's just that simple. So that's something that we need each and everybody's help to get that completed for us. So let's talk a little bit about fuel and route. I know that's a hot topic for you as well. That's that's another one. Manage and, and be good stewards of the, of the company's financials, right? We know the fuel prices aren't going down. The one area that we that we're asking for help on is is fuel and route is is to utilize that fuel and route tool. It's a great tool. We ask for seventy five percent compliance. We're not, I'm not asking for a hundred percent. There's other outfits and organizations that 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 lock the fuel cards down to the time and date, 
And we're not asking for that. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars that, that are savings to CFI, not just in fuel, but there's also savings in, in, in the route itself as fuel and route in, in tolls that we can, that we can save money on. Yeah. And then, you know, on the flip of it is, is just, you know, managing idle, shut the truck off. You don't have to run it. You know, when, you know, I'm not asking ever asking anybody to be uncomfortable, but there are times you don't, don't need to run the truck. We've, yeah. You walk out there in the parking lot every day, I'm sure, and you see trucks out there and it's, you know, 55, 60 degrees out and you're like, the heck's that truck running for, you know, so help us help us save that that buck yeah that's that's a big one too and i think you know there's definitely improvements that are taking place every week we've got a big massive rollout coming out again i think early part of june and we expect things to get better uh, with that product if you think that fuel and routes not giving you the right update request another right correct and that's the easy thing to do and and folks i'm telling you our second biggest spend across our whole organization is fuel and behind wages so anything that we can do to manage that expense is key for us. So let's keep pushing that effort. Communication is is a challenge. I hear it from the drivers. I hear it every day that we need you know positive communication, and we're working hard to make sure that we we align those communication channels. And what I simply ask as well is is on the reverse is if you're going to communicate with us, offering feedback especially to follow the right channel. So Work Vivo, we all know that Work Vivo is out there. It is our company communications channel. But that's really for, in my opinion, is for company announcements where we're pushing major announcements and things like that. We've got some great pages for, you know, putting the, the pictures out there. And I love the pictures, you know, that, that we're sharing and stuff. But it's it's really not the place for, for complaints and especially for timing issues. You know, hey, I need a pickup number or hey, you know, this load isn't something's happening with it. Work Vivo isn't monitored, you know, 24 seven every minute of the day. But our onboard communications tools are, yeah. the Omnitrax tool is, our phones are. If we have those, we use the right communications tool. And then if you have suggestions or feedback, we've got tools for that too. So on the driver dashboard, there's a Your Voice is Heard button on there. You click on that. You can put your name, your truck number, and whatever feedback you want to give. That goes to the driver advocates. Yeah. It's automatically logged into the driver advocate log. And then they take that information and they farm it out and share it with the appropriate person, whether it's the fleet manager, customer service, whoever it may be. And so we're, we'll get that information out there. On the driver app, there's a feedback button as well. That feedback button is actually for feedback on the driver app. What do you want to see? What do you, you know, to make that, to improve that app? So I just ask everybody to use the right tool. platform, yep. right tool. Yep. To get the information to the right person and when they do we'll respond in a in a more timely manner just as an fyi for everybody and i know our professional drivers always love to hear about trucks and trailers and all that kind of stuff right so this year we are scheduled to purchase about 450 new trucks today i think we've received about 50 of those new trucks so we are actually ahead of schedule which is good um, and I know Studer and, and Jared and the maintenance team have been working hard to get everybody kind of swapped out based on mileage and where they're at with the age of the truck and that type of thing. So uh, if you're in a 19 or probably a 20 that's got more than 400,000 miles, there's probably a pretty good chance you're going to see a new truck this year, which is good. We're going to sell about 1,200 of our older trailers, which are the 07, 08s and 09s and even a few 12s. Right now, we've got about 700 of those pulled off the road and uh, we're, we're clipping off at about 50 a week. So our goal is to have all of those old super single arm breaking yeah, you probably got some scars <laughs> on your arm too, uh, to get those out of the fleet and hopefully get those moving on to a new life. So, you know, all of our professional drivers are really focused on uh, what we're seeing, what we're hearing in the industry and, and the economy. And when's it going to pick up, Greg, right? When, when are we going to see an improvement in volume? I will tell you this week, we've seen a little bit of a tick up. I think we've been a little bit more aggressive in trying to manage our rate structure and working with different shippers to try to figure out how to land more freight. And I think that the one positive that I do want to share is that we did win some new freight. Some of these are going to be starting at different times, but I want to re recap this for you. TJ Maxx, which is one of our larger shippers, we just won about 1,285 loads annually, and that will start in the month of June. Daimler, FedEx, Home Depot, we've, we won a small award with Home Depot. Kohl's, we've got a small award. TBC, about a thousand loads. And then Michelin uh, and UPS, we actually had uh, between both of them, a little over a thousand loads. There's been some questions to me uh, by some of our professional drivers and, and you know, the feedback as well is this, 
is this a CFI issue? Is it because we were just purchased by our parent company? Is it, you know, what's driving that? Well, this is not something that is related to our parent company. This is not something specific to CFI. Again, I want to stress that this is really going across all swaths of the business out there today. Whether it's a flatbed carrier, whether it's refrigerated, whether it's van, whatever it may be, even the LTL industry, we're seeing dips in their volume. So this is just one of these cycles that we go through. If we want to participate in a recession, we can. But folks, as I always say, this is up to us as to how we handle this, how we execute and the things that we're doing and the communication that Tim talked about is ever so important because it's easy to get out there, get frustrated, irritated and, and say, you know what, I'm gonna go somewhere else. And the sad thing is you're gonna probably end up coming right back to us because nobody treats you as good as what CFI does. I promise you that. If I can, if I'd like to give a shout out. So just to kind of go on the, the, the booking of freight, we are the operations team, along with our, our revenue management team, are, are booking more additional freight, ad hoc freight yep. than ever before. Yep. And just so our drivers know, and I don't think it's it's understood is is the amount of resources we've put in play for that, yeah. right? So we had a group that's called the Operations Network Group. I supported that many yep. years ago. We've revamped that group. We've called people back in yep. out of other roles just to go out there and, and harvest freight. Yep. Uh, shout out this week to, to Tia Lewis yep. on, on Fleet Leader. She's her and then Cody Keener, one of the ops managers that I've support. Rebecca Young, Nikki Volk, and others have jumped in there. And as well, yesterday, as at the end of closes yesterday, we almost booked almost 400 additional loads. Yeah. In just last week. And it hats off to those folks as well because that's a big, big deal. They're they're sliding themselves into a complete different position and helping us. And you know, I think just with that and the the freight from our sister companies, we had. A little over 600 loads this week which is almost a day's worth of freight for all of us so yeah. that's that's a big ordeal and, and we just want to say thank you for those folks reminder that Mar may 16th through the 18th the commercial vehicle safety alliance will be doing road checks it appears that the 72-hour blitz will be u.s canada and mexico and the focus this year is going to be on analog braking systems so i would highly encourage you to make sure especially during that week but i would want you to do it every day is your pre-trips and your post-trips. And if there's an issue, get a hold of road service and let's make sure we get it fixed because listen folks, our CSA scores are extremely important as well as your own personal CSA scores. And the last thing that we want is, is a bad record on ourselves or an individual. So let's make sure and take care of those things. Thanks, Tim, appreciate you being here. Thank you for your service. We appreciate you being a part of this big deal. And uh, most importantly, folks, we, we wish every one of you a great week, be safe. Thank you for what you do, and most importantly, uh, be the captain of your ship out there. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.